do you know how to vacuum seal crackers? Hello everybody, this is Deb from Just Do Something Homestead and today we're gonna learn how to vacuum seal crackers. Now on my long list, I intend to make some wonderful homemade graham crackers, but that's not gonna happen today. So on my short list, I'm going to vacuum seal some crackers that I bought. Vacuum sealed crackers have a fairly long shelf life, but you do want to read the ingredients because if it has a lot of oil, the oil will go rancid. Another ingredient to be a little leery of is nuts. So if you're talking like nut thins, you're going to have a shorter shelf life than you will if it does not have any nuts or oil. Let's talk about canning jars. For most things that I vacuum seal, I stick with half gallon jars. I bought this case of half gallon for $16.44 about two weeks ago from Walmart. Two cases not only include the jar, but it also has the rings and the lids. One entire box of Annie's graham crackers will fit into one half gallon jar. But if your family is the type that will open up that jar and eat the entire box at one setting, then I would switch to a smaller one. We have the quart size and we even have pint. Both of these have wide mouths, which I recommend wide mouth whenever you're doing something bulky like crackers. Before you get started with vacuum sealing, you wanna open up that case, wash all these jars with hot soapy water and let them dry completely. The same with the lids and the rings. The most important piece of equipment you're going to use today is your vacuum sealer. I prefer to use my food saver. It is from the series F. M5200 and my original one which I'm still using is over 11 years old and it has never ever given me a false seal. A false seal is when you vacuum seal a jar, it is sealed, you take it, you put it in your pantry and a month later, a year later, two years later you come out and you find out it's no longer sealed and so my vacuum sealer has never given me a false seal. And that is very important to me because I don't have time to check all my seals. Um, the way you do it, you just push on it. And if the seal is not solid, you will hear a little thump and it'll move when you do that. Not only do you need a vacuum sealer, but you also need the attachments that go on the top of the lid. They come in a set of two and I ordered mine off of Amazon. Now I just checked and the price is $13.99 for both of them. If you have a vacuum sealer, make sure that it has the port attachment. Without that, you're not gonna have anything that you can plug it into. So this is the port that gets plugged in the top of the jar sealers. And I very quickly want to address this because I'm reading this over and over on Facebook and it's very, very upsetting but people are trying to vacuum seal foods that need to be canned. Just because that fits on there and it'll suck out the air does not make that corn canned. Never ever try to use your vacuum sealer when you need to can food. A vacuum sealer is only to be used on dry food that you intend to put on a shelf. It is not to be used as a canner. Now you can use it for fresh fruits and vegetables if you're gonna store it in your refrigerator until they go bad, which would be, you know, one to two weeks. Let's get back to vacuum sealing crackers. You need clean jars, rings, lids, and let me show you how I store my rings. My rings are on a metal paper towel rack that I got at Dollar Tree. And then I store my lids in this little plastic container you can reuse your lids over and over again when you vacuum seal, not for canning, but for vacuum sealing. So even though I've used this lid before, as long as it still seals, that lid is still good. I'm gonna take out all the sleeves that have graham crackers in them and I'm going to open it and break those graham crackers into squares. You know, I'm pretty certain that when I was a kid, there were four sleeves of crackers that came in your graham crackers. You can put them into your jar as rectangles. I just found that I can store more if I break them in half and put them in as squares. When I take out all the crackers, there's a lot of crumbs still in that sleeve. I pour those into a small canning jar so that I can save the graham cracker crumbs to make a crust for a pie. I have one sleeve of crackers in there. What you wanna do is start rocking it around and shaking it down because when you do that, you'll be able to fit in far more. 
Once the jar is filled, I'm gonna take my clean hand and just make sure there's no crumbs on the top of that rim. When I place my lid on top, you will see there's a little dot there. That's because this lid has been used before and that's where I used it to open it and poke down into it. But it did not break the seal, so it's gonna seal fine. You're gonna put the jar sealer attachment on top until it's on solid, just like that. And push in the plug in the top hole on the sealer. You're gonna turn the power on your vacuum sealer, and then it's going to say dry seal. You're gonna push accessory and your machine will shut off when your jar is sealed. Then remove the top piece and take off the jar sealer. To check if this jar is sealed, you wanna push on that center and it should not move. It should actually be sunk in a little. Then pull. I pull as hard as I can trying to get that lid off with my fingers. If this lid can be pulled off with your fingers, you know it is not gonna store long-term. It's only gonna store for a month or two, maybe three months. So. If you pull and you can't get it off, it is good to go. The next step is to put a ring on it. That is opposite of canning. Canning you store without rings, vacuum sealing you store with the rings. And I am asked this over and over again by subscribers. Do you need to add oxygen absorbers? Absolutely not. If your vacuum sealer is powerful enough to remove the air for long-term storage, there's no oxygen in there. The air has been removed, so it is redundant to add oxygen absorbers. The next step is to write the new Best Buy date on your jar. You find the information by looking at your box, and this one, unfortunately, is May 5th, 2024. That is not very long. So I am going to put May 2025 as the new Best Buy date. And there you have it. This jar is ready to go on my pantry shelf. And while we're talking about pantry, let's talk about the best way to store your foods in a pantry. We are in my pantry now and it is temperature controlled. I set it at about 45 degrees. It is also completely in the dark, except when I'm in here. Then in the summer, it gets way too hot in here. So you have to add air conditioning to again, keep it cool, dark and dry. Last week, a viewer asked me, why are you stocking up on food? Hmm, well, that's a good question. I stock up on food for food security. Just today, our pastor said at church that he went to buy some steak. It was $25 a pound. Who can afford that? In fact, I worry about families all the time. How can they afford to feed their children? The cost of everything is up, our income is down, there is civil unrest, and there are already shortages of food. That is why I stock up on food. Another reason that I stock up on food is I can save money. Last week, I got oatmeal on sale, but because I vacuum sealed it, it's going to store longer, and I got it when it was cheap. And what about flour? Because it is vacuum sealed, I'm not going to lose it to insects. So if you're looking at the big picture, vacuum sealing food enables me to store up on food so that it stays safe and doesn't go bad. If you enjoyed this video on how to vacuum seal crackers, please like, subscribe, and share. Have a blessed day, everybody. Bye-bye.